So instead of this video being a normal speeder, I wanted to go in with a little more depth and explain my process slash decisions I make to execute my final result. In this video, I participate in Benny Productions' April Photoshop competition. The rules were, use one or more photos provided, do not add any text or signatures, and stick to the apocalypse theme. So after considering that, I went over to Envato Elements to get all my stock images I would need for this piece. And here they are. Anyways, that's it for now, and enjoy the video. So for this video, I'm just going to be explaining my process more on how I do things in Photoshop and what I do to accomplish the final result. So right now, I'm just sketching out my idea. Um, this is for Benny's April competition, by the way. Uh, I was just sketching out what I thought would be cool as an end result. I drew like a van and like a, a person crawling on the side of it almost, and then Benny being the main subject on top of the van. And it's all like apocalypse theme. So like the windows are boarded up and there's like an abandoned city in the background. And there's gonna be other people in the background. And again, this is just a rough idea. So no black levels are really like accurate. Nothing's really 100% accurate. This is just an idea. Now you can see me dropping in my first image, which was this grassy hill that I then duplicate and then erase the um, um, the excess sides off of. And now I'm using a grass brush to paint over top of the grass hills so it looks more realistic and when I paint highlights it'll look better. Now I'm cutting out my van image which you realize will become a big problem later because I have to do so much to this van. Because not only does it, it's just a stock image, complete white, no lighting whatsoever pretty much, but uh, the complete, the angle I wanted at is so different than the stock image that I had to take the side of it, put it on the top, and make it fit as perfect as possible. And I, you see me ended up extending it right there because it felt too thin and it didn't really feel like a van. Um, that's definitely one thing I struggle with in these is perspective. Perspective is really hard and uh, to get that down, it, it's really important. Now you see me dropping in a city in the background after I just dropped in the sky image. And now I'm dra dropping in some uh, some elements on the side, some more broken down buildings just to give it the more apocalypse feel. And now I'm starting to color correct stuff. So you see me color correcting the ground. And since nothing is color corrected, I don't really know how I want the thing to feel in the end. So I'm kind of just messing with stuff until it feels right. And you can see me adjusting the black levels and the temperature of the buildings in the background right now too. And here, I finally decided to add some glow, and uh, I'm adding that to the sunset, and then I'm starting to erase some of the excess parts off of the building on the left side that I don't want. Now, I'm just painting in some shadows on the ground, where I think it would be darker, because again, I'm trying to blend this building to the ground, and that's like one of my biggest struggles for me, is blending blending big buildings in like in the distance when you can see it touching the ground. It's kind of hard for me because especially these ones when there's a lot of stuff on the ground like rubble and stuff, it's really weird um, to get that look real and accurate. And right now you just see me painting a bunch of shadows underneath it and I keep on erasing them because it doesn't look right and I keep doing it over and over and over again and eventually I get it right. And I even do more stuff to it later in the video but right now I'm just adding some highlights from the sun because the sun is very, very bright on the right side. So we gotta add a bunch of highlights on this building because it's almost, it's not facing towards it, but it's kind of cocked towards the camera where the camera would be, but they're still gonna appear there because of how it looks. And here I am just doing the same thing to the other one, adding shadows and highlights and using a grass, br grass brush, God, I cannot say that word, grass brush to remove some of the bottom things of the tower. Right now, I'm trying to color correct the van because the van was really out of place. I'm, I'm messing with the shadows, changing the color a little bit, giving it a little bit of a blue tint. Then I'm giving it some orange, adding one long highlight on the backside because of the strong direct lighting from the sun. 
And right now it doesn't look very good. It looks too clean. So I added these, uh, these rust textures I found on Envato Elements that actually help a lot. And they, I add a couple, I overlap a couple and they end up working a lot, but I'm right now I'm just messing with the, um, the opacity and the blend mode and, or blend if and all that stuff just to see what works best. And I also wanted this to be on, so I turned on the backlight. So it just looked like um, the car was on. And that's a very subtle detail right there that I just added. I just added uh, red highlights to the little lipped edge of the van right there. And right now I just, I cut out this window of another van because this van doesn't have windows and I wanted windows so I could board it up so it looked more apocalyptic or whatever you want to say. But right now there was no window so I just cut out this window for the shape instead of making my own because I wanted it to be more accurate. And then here I got this plank image that's actually really low resolution, but I make it work anyways. Um, it's it's also a 3D model from uh, Envato Elements. But here I'm just painting some highlights and some shadows, shadows mostly because there's almost no light coming to the back of this van, except for the red lights on the left side. But most of these shadows are guesswork. All these interactive shadows, um, all these shadows coming off of it, it's, it's all just guesswork. You really just gotta do it till you think it's right. Now I finally added in our main subject, which will be Benny, and he provided these stock images. And I, I liked the pose, but I didn't like his arm being up. I wanted his arm down. I wanted it to look like he was shooting the gun. And the only way I could do that was by using other images that he provided, trying to blend them as good as possible. Right now his arm, like it looked right to me when I was doing it, but then when I zoomed out, I took a step back and looked at it again, It I slowly realized that that does not look real or anything realistic at all. His arm looks like it's out of place, it's broken or something's wrong. That's why I just flipped it there. And here you see me tilt up his arm with uh, the puppet tool. It's a very, very powerful tool. I recommend it 100% but I basically just tucked in his arm and lifted it up just to make it look more realistic. And now I'm changing his color. Uh, to color correct stuff is really easy. Once you get the hang of it, I'm not gonna say it's not, I shouldn't say it's easy. It's actually very hard, but um, the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And there's nothing, you, there's no really cheats to it. You can't really do anything to make it easier. It's just, it is what it is. And the more you do it, the more you'll get better at it. And a lot of people take this for granted. Uh, they don't add shadows. They'll add highlights and they think highlights is everything, but they forget about shadows. And shadows are arguably more important than highlights. And right now you just saw me add a bunch of highlights to the inside of him because that's the part that is not reaching, um, that is reaching the least amount of light. And then I added some uh, rim lighting on the right side coming from the sun right behind him. And then here I'm adding some strong blue tones into the shadows because I want this to be, you know, like a orange and teal kind of thing. And that's what I had in mind for the color correction at the time. Now I'm adding a gas mask, and this was kind of weird because uh, the 3D model that I got from Envato Elements, um, they don't give you, uh, I, re I really wish they could like, you could, especially with glass stuff, if there's stuff behind it, if there's some kind of option or something to help us with that, because then I have to cut it out myself and that's really annoying and I don't like doing it. But I had to, I cut out the top strap because I didn't want to do all that stuff to his hair. And then I cut out the, um, the back of the band passing through the, um, the glass in the gas mask. And then I slowly fit it to his face and, you know, did everything to make it look good. I added some shadows to his skin because, you know, there's no light coming from there. So, you know, contact shadows and more shadows to the surface, you know, made stuff look real, added some highlights, stuff like that. Uh, but I did tweak with this uh, gas mask for a while because it just, every time I stepped back and looked at it, it just didn't look right to me. So I ended up moving the band, moving it. A lot of warp, a lot of, uh, a lot of fixing the glass in there, making it more foggy, stuff like that.
Now I'm just adding some more bloomed glow. I felt like the glow that I added at the beginning was, it was enough, but I wanted more because I don't know, I'm needy. I want it to pop more. And right now you see me duplicating the window and adding another window to the backside, but I ended up warping that because it didn't look right because it was tilting up and that's not how windows are. And I just, I kind of cheated because I duplicated it and then just moved it over the side and then I'm just slowly altering them so they don't look exactly the same. But that's, that's, that saved me like 20 minutes, so. And then here I'm adding the moon and I didn't want a full moon. I wanted a, I wanted a crescent moon, so I, I erased half of it and I started adding some glow and some, uh, I think I used an exposure layer maybe. Or maybe I might have, yeah, I think I used an exposure layer. Now here, I wanted the uh, van to look more grungy, so I decided to start painting blood on top of it, and I used a couple different methods here. Um, see, I was doing the method that I used in another video, which was like a, it was like a oval, and then just smearing it around and using the flow to change it and make it look more dingy. But then I was like, ah, I'm not gonna do that. And then I, and then I remembered that I had. Um, Splatter brushes. I downloaded splatter brushes also from Envato Elements. Go check them out. It's insane, insane website. I don't know what the subscription is. I'm not sponsored by them, but go check them out. But basically what I did was I added blood splatters with the splatter brush everywhere, over everything, over the wood, over the van, over his suit, everything. Because, you know, it's apocalypse. Everything is dirty. Not everything is going to be clean. It's not going to be perfect. You want to add imperfections. If you're, if you are working to make your art look real or look, look dingy or worn down, imperfections are your best friend and right now um i kind of i was talking too much i missed this but i added this zombie and i started color correcting him and adding a, a red hue and saturation layer so i can add some red highlights to the back of him because the back of him would be affected from the bright red uh tail light of the car Okay, here I'm adding some very subtle and very um, just subtle fog, so that so the uh, the light would point out more. And here, I'm this is actually my favorite decision. So I was normally just gonna make these, or I was originally just gonna make these normal zombies, but then I was like, ah, that's too boring, too plain. I want something different. So I added this alien that I got also from Envato Elements 3D Asset Library. Go check them out. Um, and I put it on his face, like if it was taking over them, like if it was some kind of being that attached to people's face and that's what made them zombies or, or whatever they are. But I started by adding a glow, embedding it to his hair, adding it on his skin, you know, just making it very, I just wanted to make it pop. I wanted these guys to have more glow on them. I wanted them to look like, uh, I don't know, like you could see him from a mile away. That's what I was going for. Uh, to add all these highlights on his jacket and stuff, I used a hue and saturation layer. It was, um, it's he's in the dark pretty much, so they're not gonna be very bright. But another thing I decided to do was I added his uh, his blood or the where it's exposed, I made it green and I made it glowing. I thought I would just add a little extra, you know, mystery on top of it. Right, and here for the gun, I'm adding a muzzle flash because I just wanted him to be shooting, you know, more action. I first started by adding a very bright exposure layer and painting over the top of it because when you shoot a gun, you know, it's it's pretty much just white. There is color, but it is pretty much just white and overexposed. But I this isn't this isn't real life. I want it to be more stylized, so I added some yellow and I gave it more of a yellow tint. But I just wanted the center to very to bloom a lot. So I added glow on top of that too, and then I started adding the background characters, so other zombies and stuff that would be coming towards our subject and our scene to, you know, make it flow better. Right now, I'm just color correcting them, changing them very slightly, like their uh, their jacket color, their paint color, you know, maybe warp them a little bit just to make them look a little different in a different position. But I do that to all of these until I'm until I'm happy. 
One thing I'll say is um, one thing that'll definitely ruin your uh, art pieces is if you're lazy. So I, I've found myself doing this multiple times and there are ways where you can just do it and not be lazy like me duplicating the window. I That was really like, there was nothing wrong with that. I'm sure if I wanted to make it even more different, I could have just done it all over again, but it's very, it's very small. But right now, like skipping over this or like duplicating the same curves adjustment layer for the first one onto all those ones would be lazy because one, it would be extremely inaccurate because they're all at different positions in the composition. Now here, I'm just adding the um, aliens on top of all the subjects that I added in the background, and I'm adding like very small and subtle highlights and glows and all that stuff just to make them, you know, fit and look like the other one in the cl in the foreground, but, you know, still subtle enough to where you can tell what it is, but not over the top with all the glow. Now here I'm adding more aliens, but I'm adding them not connected to anyone, so it just looks like they're uh, they're trying to attack Benny, our subject. And um, and then I I started by I started fixing them by adding color correction and highlights and glow and all the stuff needed to make them actually fit my composition and not just look like they're floating. So for this one on the back. I, uh, I started adding shadows to him, contact shadows, to where he was connecting to the van. And then I added glow over top of his uh, body or whatever you want to call it. And then I added glow on the van, and then I did the same thing to the other one. Started with shadows. I then added reflections of them, very, very subtle reflections to the van uh, by duplicating them, flipping them upside down, and then just using blend if to erase most of them. And then right here, I'm adding a little bit of a uh, moonlight onto the building just because I felt like it was needed. I felt like it'd look a little better. And then after that, I was like, okay, that's good. <laughs> 